So, who lives here? Ooh, what's this stuff? Statues. Kiatos Moreno Sofar Tatali Pinoek and Lumita. And then below the statues, to the right of each one, we got some letters and whatnot. Um, this first one here says GWQV. This is CGFW. XVGB question mark ZXF and then we get BXJZ and QQFC interesting so what's this over here we can set six letters and this is an interesting assortment of letters because all of these letters to some degree appear here in the balls but they don't appear here in the red signs but what are the six letters we need to put in we don't really know but we can only assume that doing so will unlock the door but we have another path over here let's check this out real quick all right we got some dials here that we can set these various letters to. And it seems like these are all the letters plus the question mark that appeared in the red signs. So maybe all we need to do is just set this such that um, each dial indicates how many times each letter appears in total. So let's see how this works. Let's start over here. V appeared twice, F appeared three times, B appeared twice, and W appeared twice. The middle cabinet, X appeared three times, the question mark one, the G appeared three times, and C appeared twice. And finally, this one, Q appeared three times, D none, Z appeared twice, and J appeared only once. All right, so what do we have here? We have a little uh, box here. And it's got a clue here that shows a ball with a shadow that has an X through it and a ball that has no shadow with a green O indicating that this is correct. Are these referring to the stones in the statue area maybe? Let's go back there and look at that real quick. Hmm, it looks like in these statues here, one of the balls doesn't have a shadow on it. In this one, it's the second last one, which is O. You can kind of see them better here up top. In this one, it's the second one, which is E. And then here, it's the first one, which is S. And this is the third one, which is T. And then the last one, which is a K. And then the fourth one, which is an I. Well, let's try entering that in here. O E S T K I. Nothing. Well, that's a bummer. But notice that each of those balls was in a different position, and maybe if we arrange them in order, we'll get the right answer. So let's start off with the first one, which is S, and then the second one I believe was over here, which is E, the third one is T, it's this one, and then M is the fourth one, which I believe makes O the fifth one, and then K is the last one. So S E T. M O K, I think is the right answer. Or wait, I O K. Yeah, this is not an M. This is an I. It's the fourth one. So let's put S here. We don't need to change the second one, thankfully. So 
Sediok. I kind of want these to be real words. Or maybe that's just my Scrabble playing self wishing for them to be real words. Alright, so now we get to a room with no way across. That opens a door, though. That's pretty nice. What's this thing? Or is a coin or something spinning around? <laughs> I like how we can bang on it. Okay, so that dispenses it somewhere on the other side. This is Meniandez. Welcome to my house. Please accept my apology that I'm not here in person. Here you will find some items necessary for your further exploration. See you again soon. Yeah, I don't know why the sound is off for this part, but it's, for some reason it is, so I'm having to do my own voice acting, and I figured I'd imitate the REM style voice acting. Anyway, um, what else is here? There's a button. Oh, that just closes that. And a room over here. There's something in there. And over here we got panels with six buttons and a symbol next to each one on another panel. Hmm. It looks like these are indicating doors opening or something. So if that is indeed the case, where have we seen six doors open? Well, if you think back to the very beginning of the game, in that six-door room, each of the doors opened differently. And here, you'll, your knowledge of that will have to be put to the test. And unfortunately, yes, I did have to go all the way back and get the answer to that, just because I never even noted that when I was first there. But fortunately, I've got the answer right here. This one belongs to door number six, this one to door number two, this one to door number three, and then finally, this one to door number five, this is four, and this one is one. And we get money! Money, 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 money! Alright. We don't know exactly how we're going to use that, but hopefully it will be useful later on. I want to check out where that coin or whatever that was dropped over here. Did it appear over in this section? Yep, here we go. Also, I didn't really see what was down at the end of this path. Let's see what that is. There's something here. It looks like we're supposed to put a round object in there. So let's try our coin. Nope. The metal piece too, which I'm assuming is part of that mold. Nope. Alright, so none of those work. And that's locked as well. Okay, so we're going to need more for this area. So let's go ahead and leave. And we'll explore the next area. Of course, this means that we're going to do our track switching game here again. But it won't take too long. I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Alright, I'm going to go back to the south stop. Even though I'm trying to get to the east section, I don't want to stop at the west side because that me means I'm going to have to go through the broken bridge thing. So, And the only thing that connects the west side over to anything else is the east side, and the east side is when I'm going to be changing, so that's not really going to work out. I believe one more stop should do it, so we should be on the south side, facing north once we get out. And we are! Alright, it's good. So, first things first, let's go up to the north side and close that off. Just make sure we don't go through there. Because remember, we're having to go clockwise, so we're going to have to make sure that we don't veer off that direction. And then we'll go over here to the east side and take care of this bit. Alright, so now it's just a simple matter of going through again. Like I said earlier, this part of the game is kind of a little bit irritating because you keep you have to keep doing this all the time, but thankfully I was able to find a way that pretty much makes it fairly simple as far as uh, going through everything the least number of times that you need to. And yet still everything makes logical sense as far as solving the puzzles. Alright, one more. And here we go. Ooh, a 
watery area. Looks like there's some broken down buildings here. Makes me wonder what used to be here. Maybe this was the puzzle plaza of civilization's past. Oh no, this is interesting. It looked like there was something over here on this side. But of course we can't get to it with the tram blocking the way. Almost looks like, well I guess that's part of the tram. It looks like there's something there. Can we see it better from here? Yeah, there's like a building or something over there. So what have we got in this tunnel? Oh, a ball. Well, we can't pick it up, but it's inside a triangle. And also inside the triangle are tally marks that spell out 14. I guess that's a clue for something since we can't really interact with it otherwise. Yeah, there's the building right here. And we can't operate this. But maybe this sends the tram away so we can get over to the other side. I mean, it makes sense. And here we have... some buttons. Interesting. Oh well, we don't really know what to do with that either, so we'll leave that alone for now. And what do we got here? Of course. We got a clue thing that we can set to random numbers. And then there's this scroll symbol with a question mark on it. And then the numbers go through these wires and they come out over here. Fascinating. Okay. Again, we still don't have enough information for that. And here, we have a place where we can put our light bulb. Well, that's interesting. In my practice run, I couldn't pick it up. Maybe I just wasn't clicking in the right place. And it seems like we have to put something else there, but we don't really have an object that would fit. But notice that this seems to be in the same general shape as that scroll symbol that we saw there. So we have to keep an eye out for that. Ooh. This certainly looks familiar. We can press this to set this clock to a different position. But I'm going to leave it at 12 o'clock. That's what we stopped the other clock at the uh, front area at. Again, though, we don't really have enough to complete this. <coughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and head out of here. At least we know some things that we can keep an eye out for, though. But we have to assume that this... Uh, diagram here is going to be somehow important for that clock related puzzle. Well there's only one other um, branching path that we haven't looked at yet and that is the one on the west side. So let's go ahead and check that out. Thankfully we don't have to backtrack nearly as far here, we just need to go to the east stop. Um, or excuse me, the north stop, so that we can close off the east stop. But while we're at the east stop closing it off, we can use that ladder to cross over to the west side. See, right now we're on the north stop. And then here, we can just go this way, close this guy off, like that. And then we can use our trusty, dusty ladder here to get down. Pretty nifty. And here's a good example of why you want to take this path. You can go through here to get to the west side. Because again, you wouldn't really be able to get here otherwise short of taking the tram, and we don't really want to take the tram yet. Because we can't adjust this with the tram there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and explore the west area. We visited the House of Many Andes in the north area, we visited the watery ruins in the east area, so now let's see what's on the west side. Once I stop getting turned around. Alright. So let's just move forward a couple of times and we should be in position to get over there. Oh wait, no, we have to go forward three times. My bad. So we have to go east and then south and then west. And then we go forward again to actually get to the stop of the branching path. Yep, 
Yeah, I know that this part is kind of a little bit tedious, but... Thankfully, we're not going to really have to worry about doing this too much more. I think we're about halfway done with this area, as far as the tram traveling is concerned. Don't quote me on that, but I think we're getting pretty close to that point. Alright, so we went through a nice tunnel. So what's out here? Alright, we get a panel with three numbers. And then over here we have four panels. We can press a button and it seems like we get a random number. That's interesting. Hmm. And then over here we have a... This, this panel has two uh, circles inside a triangle. And then this panel has two circles inside a triangle as well as two overlapping circles inside another triangle. And then this right here has a circle with an X through it. And it has a button. And then this triangle has a circle inside of it with a number here. And then this button has like a reset symbol next to it too. Curious. Well, let's try experimenting with this here. Let's, let's try this button first. We haven't really experimented with this one yet. And we saw this one before this one. Okay, so it dropped five um, balls here into this pit. Let's check those out. Looks like there's a path over here that leads there. And this right here has a triangle with the two overlapping circles in it. But we really can't do anything with this pile of stuff, so let's not worry about that. Again, five balls. And here we can see that the number has increased to 88. Let's try doing something different here. Okay, so that time it dropped eight balls. Well, if you're comparing what happened last time with what happened this time, you'll notice that we had the number 23 here and it dropped five balls. And this time we had the number 71 here, and it dropped eight balls. So what you're supposed to figure out here, and this took me a while to get, and there's more reasons why this is really confusing, which I'll explain here in a little bit. But what you're supposed to figure out is that this number gives you two separate numbers, and that the overlapping circles indicate that they, the two numbers from here are taken and, and made into a sum. So seven plus one equals eight, two plus three equals five. So for instance, if I were to uh, go for 84, this would be 12. Okay, so that happened. But what are we supposed to do with all this? Does this do anything? It didn't seem like it, but let's try doing this again. With 11, let's just go with 11. Okay, so it gave us a little bit of a honky sound on the second ball that was dropped. Let's try that again. Okay, it did it again. Let's try a different number. Again, it gives us the honk sound on the second ball. Okay, well that's certainly interesting, but still, we don't really know what all this is for. Well, let's take a look at what's in here, since we haven't seen this yet. So here we have a dice symbol, which indicates that this gives us a random number, and this is another sum. Over here we have a door, and this is connected to that three digits thing outside, and we have a, a clue here that shows three circles outside a triangle. We can also put some kind of pentagonal shape thing here. And in this room, we have two separate circles, and we can, we can set numbers here on this, I guess. And then here, we have a, a triangle with an over, or not overlapping circles, um, a circle with an X through it. So, what's really confusing about this puzzle, I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now, is that 
the overlapping circles here that are connected to the separating circles here have nothing at all to do with the stuff out here. Basically, this is a separate puzzle from most of the stuff in that other room. And what you're supposed to figure out is that the triangle that we saw in the east area that had the red ball inside of it is important here. And let me reset and show you guys why. So that goes back to zero, and we can start the count all over again. Okay, so eight balls dropped. You're with me so far, right? Aha! Did you notice that there was something different that dropped on the 14th ball? It was a red sphere. Now, we want this red sphere. I mean, you're not really supposed to know why, I guess, except for that clue in that little tunnel that we were just through, or a little while ago that we were walking through. But you're supposed to get that red ball. And if you were to go all the way over here to look at the pile of stuff, unfortunately the red ball has been covered up. I don't know why the player character just can't sift through all that, but for whatever reason, you can't. So what you really want to do is you want to set this up such that the 14th ball is the last ball dropped. So I'm, I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to try to get something that adds up to 14 here. Whether it's 7 plus 7 or 6 plus 8 or something. That's 12. There we go. Okay, let's do this. There we go. Okay, so now let's go and get our red ball. And as it turns out, this is what we need for that uh, little container that was in Miniandus's area that needed the spherical thing. I mean, I guess you could use that to figure out that you need the red ball. Other, I mean, other than the fact that the red ball is just special and unique and that you can go there and get something. But anyway, that's how you solve this puzzle with the silo here. This puzzle, though, is completely separate for the most part. Other than this panel here where you set a number um, that connects with this triangle with the crossed out circle, this is supposed to be the number that corresponds with when that ding was heard, that honky sound outside, and that was always on the second ball, so we'll put that at two. And I want to say that's different uh, for each time you play the game. I'm, don't quote me on that, but I think it's different. This, on the other hand, this is completely separate. This has nothing to do with the numbers outside, and this is what really confused me because I saw this kind of font that was used, the blocky font, and I thought, oh, hey, you know, this is somehow connected with the blocky font that's used in here um, for, with these numbers. But no, these, these two things are just connected with each other separately apart from this. So, what you're supposed to figure out, and this is yet another leap in logic that I had to make, is that this is the sum, 25, and that you have to use these numbers to add up to it, but you don't use two numbers, you use four separate numbers. And this really confused me because I saw two uh, circles and I figured, well, two circles inside the triangle worked for two numbers here. So I thought, okay, there are two circles inside this triangle that make this sum, and that must mean that we need to make two two-digit numbers to make that work. Even if the two-digit numbers were like zero something, zero something, you know, if it was like ultimately a single-digit number. But no, what you really need to do is you need to have four single-digit numbers add up to that amount. Yeah. I, I don't really... Uh, I'm not a big fan of this puzzle for that reason. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's go ahead and just add this up. That should be 18 plus 7. Okay, good. And here we go. Another fragments. This time we got fragment 6.